Hi, I'm Josh Thomas. You can find me on GitHub or Twitter as jtoms1. And I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. So the weather here feels at home to me. But I got an email last week that went out to all the speakers and it mentioned to dress appropriately because it was gonna be below zero here. So I assumed Fahrenheit, but it's Celsius, so. A little bit of panic, but I'm good now. I'm a senior developer at Ionic, and I've been there for about two and a half years. And I'm also a core member of the open source team. And I organize a local meetup called MadJS in Madison. And funny story is that Ionic was actually first announced in 2013 at the meetup, and I spoke right before Max Lynch, but no one remembers anything I talked about. So being an organizer of a meetup, there's quite a few times where you've got to step up and speak if you don't get a speaker for that month. And I usually keep a list of topics in my back pocket, things that I want to learn that I'm going to be excited to speak about. And one of those was Vue. And like usual, when I speak at meetups, I started on the presentation the day before. And fortunately, Vue had my back because I was able to build an application and learn Vue in one day. And this was really surprising to me because not only did the application work, I had a lot of confidence in the application that I created, the fact that it was idiomatic Vue. And I was able to go the next day to the meetup and teach people exactly what I had learned. So what I like about Vue, number one, documentation. It's the gold standard, in my opinion, for open source projects. Great explanations, excellent examples. It's got a robust tool chain. With CLI v3, with the new scaffolding and the plugin architecture, it's amazing. Batteries included, as you wish. So it's really nice. This is one of my favorite things about Vue, is that it gives you a clear path to include tools like the router and Vuex. And sometimes having these opinions provided to you is really liberating when you're building applications. And the last thing that I really like is the TypeScript support that comes with Vue. I'm a big proponent of TypeScript, and I'm happy to hear that Vue 3 is also going to be written in TypeScript. And around the office, I used to be called Joshua JS because I've written JavaScript for like over, over 10 years, but anymore I'm called Joshua TS. So again, I'm telling you all these great things about Vue, but we're at a Vue conference, so I'm just preaching to the choir right now. But I want to provide you some background on the things that I personally valued while working with Vue. And my talk title is A View from Ionic, and what I'm alluding to is how we see, I Ion I'm sorry, how we see Vue from the perspective of Ionic. So what exactly is Ionic? Ionic is a framework for building high quality applications. And traditionally, this has been mobile applications. It's a collection of CSS and JavaScript resources. And we call it a framework because it provides more than just a collection of components. There's more value to it than that. The code is built in such a way that components can be used with a number of different frameworks. But right now, we only officially support Angular and vanilla JavaScript. But this is changing very soon. And with these solutions, you're, you're able to deploy your application to native devices, being iOS and Android. And we do that through using two methods. One of those would be Cordova, which is the old tried and true. And then the other being Capacitor, which is a new product that we've recently produced. We consider it to be the spiritual successor to Cordova. There are over five million applications that have already been created with Ionic. It's been around for over five years now. There are 30,000 Stack Overflow questions, hopefully answered. And there are over 100 meetups around the world dedicated to Ionic right now. It's open source, it's MIT licensed, and I've seen the analytics. Every country in the world right now has developers using Ionic, except for one, and it's North Korea. There's a collection of over 100 components. There's buttons, there's dialogues, 
toggles, inputs. And one thing to note about those components is that every single one of those components works the same way in iOS and in Android, meaning that in Android it looks like material design and on an Apple device it looks like iOS. So it's cr truly you can create applications with a single co code base for both of those. And then we use a native bridge to access uh, the device APIs through, through a capacitor. And some of the things you might do with those APIs is get access to haptic feedback or uh, camera usage or geolocation, a number of different things. And we have extensive, sorry, <laughs> we have a really beautiful design and we place a lot of value on the quality of our components. And the nice thing is, is that it looks this good out of the box. And right now we're looking at material design and in a second the same application is gonna be displayed in iOS. And this is the exact same code base. We provide tabs and stacked routing, which are things that you would expect on mobile devices. And we also provide two versions of SVG icon sets. Uh, you might have used the icons before, actually. They're called Ionicons. Uh, we have a dedicated site for them. They're really high quality. We also feature a robust theming system using CSS variables. We have extensive documentation. If I can show it to you. There we go. So on the right here you see the examples. And on the left you see information about those examples. We show usage. Um, right here we're showing Angular and vanilla JavaScript and what you're seeing here for the code is exactly what you're seeing reflected on the right. We have information about the events that get fired, about the properties that are available on the components and the nice thing is that all of this information is generated on every release. So all of Ionic is written in TypeScript. So every time we do a release, we read through the components, we gather the type information from them, the JS docs, and then we generate documentation based on that. So when should you use Ionic? Well, if you're building a mobile application, you should definitely use Ionic. If you're building a PWA, it makes a lot of sense because the, the information you're providing to the PWA and when you're deploying it, it looks exactly like a native device. And if you're building a desktop application, you can use um, any number of, sorry, my slides are messed up a little bit here. Uh, it ha we have Electron integration as well. So historically, Ionic has been for Angular only. Ionic was originally built in Angular JS, and when Ionic 2 and 3 were created, they were built with Angular and TypeScript. So Ionic has been strictly Angular in the past. But a lot of devs moved on from Angular JS to other frameworks, and those devs have been asking us to bring Ionic to them. So we know that the JS ecosystem is changing. It's no longer what is the best framework. It's which framework do you prefer? And we want Ionic to be available in all of those frameworks. And we were able to accomplish this with web components. So Today, every major browser supports web components, except for Edge, but that's coming first quarter of next year. And with IE11, we do so with polyfills. So great, now you know all about Ionic. 
but I want to tell you about the relationship that we have to view. So I posted a poll, and here are the results. Not exactly scientific, there were only 500 responses, but I was actually really surprised by these results. Traditionally, I'm a React developer, and I know that React has a very large user base. So to see Vue edging out React in the poll uh, surprised me, and it got us talking about it more at Ionic. And we see a lot of similarities between Ionic and Vue, especially with the projects, because we have shared values. Both Ionic and Vue are very approachable. They're both performant. And we have both have excellent documentation for beginners and experts alike. And you can either start with a little, you can use one component of Ionic, or you can go all in and build an entire application with Ionic. So we have high expectations on ourselves. So if we were to produce Ionic for Vue, it's going to take a lot of work. But, and in, we're also a small team, we only have five developers. So fortunately though, we have some great trusted partners like Modus Create. And they came to us and let us know that they really wanted Ionic for Vue. And they put in the work. And they created a small, simple application built with Ionic and Vue to prove the use case. And this is the application. It's called Beep. And allows you to test if your username, password, or an email has been found in a previous data breach. And this video is a demonstration of it running. And you can see that my Ionic email address had never been in a data breach, but unfortunately my Gmail address had been in quite a few. So this small proof of concept provides a lot of value. You, shouldn't go, you can go to the PWA right now and find out if you've been part of a data breach. Please do so, beep.modus.app, try it. This is a single view application that's been deployed as a PWA here. It's available in the App Store. You can download it on your iPhone. It's available in the Play Store. You can put it on your Android. And it's open source, so you can see how they did it. So after seeing them create this application, we got really excited. And we knew that we needed to move forward with Ionic View. So today, I'm happy to announce that we've released Ionic View in alpha. And <clears throat> I, I actually pushed the button at noon today, so pretty recent. And when I say alpha, I mean 0.0.1. .0 .0 uh, it's a little rough, but all the components are there, and you can make use of them. So we built this as a plugin. Just install Ionic View, say view.use Ionic, and all the components are available to you. And since they're lazy web components, you don't actually need to register them in your view. They just work. And everything from Ionic is built in TypeScript, so we have full type support as well. This is a really simple example of a .view file. I have a select box here, and this is lazy loaded into the view. And with this little bit of code, you can get a pretty versatile select experience that's good for material and for iOS. So we already saw a problem with my presentation, so we'll see how this goes. I'm either brave or I'm really stupid, but we're gonna see some live coding. So this is an Ionic View application. I spent some time and recreated our conference application in View, and you can see it running here. All of the gestures, all of the icons, all of this just comes with Ionic. So it's really easy to create a nice quality application. What you're seeing now is running on a Pixel 2, so it's material design. 
But let's switch over to an iPhone X, do a refresh. Again, same code base. Notice that the icons changed, um, the toolbar changed, the left menu changed. This is an alert or select box um, tailored to iOS. And let's take a look and let's change that. So here's the initial code. You can see all I'm doing is view.useionic. And then here's our view file. This is the page we were just looking at. This with the toolbar, the header, and the ion select. So the OK text, we have cancel text, and we have an alert interface. So let's change this interface. Instead of being an alert, let's change it a, to be an action sheet. Cool. So very simple to change, um, but it looks really professional. It looks like it belongs on an iOS system. And let's see what this looks like on a Pixel. Cool. Let's go back to iOS. All right, so we've got a PWA. We can deploy it to the store. But actually not to the store, to the web. But what if you want to put it in the Apple Store? Let's go ahead and build an iOS application. First, I'm going to run and build it for production. It's Webpack. We'll give it a sec. All right, then we run Ionic cap run copy. All right, so that command runs capacitor and opens up Xcode. And now we're gonna see it run in the iPhone XS Max emulator. Cool, so here's our iOS application with our latest changes. So what are the next steps? Well, we need community testing. One of the core th reasons why Ionic has been successful over the years is that we have a really strong community that provides a lot of good feedback. We have Slack channels, um, we have a forum, and we have a very active GitHub. So if it's possible, it would be really great if the Vue community could download this alpha and give it a try and provide us with, with feedback so that together we could build a higher quality version of what we have in alpha. We also need to update the documentation. Right now, all the documentation is just in a read, readme file in the repo. But before we go beta, we're going to include it as another tab on the docs site. So you would have Angular, Vue, and vanilla JavaScript. Here are some links. This is to the repository. There's a link to joining our Slack channel and also our forum. So thank you.